Hello YouTube and welcome to Psy Prime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. If you're new to this channel, I primarily cover Paizo tabletop role-playing games like Pathfinder and Starfinder. So, Paizo's latest Pathfinder book, Lost Omens Divine Mysteries, is starting to be released as of the posting of this video, and there's a lot of cool stuff inside it. Uh, full disclosure, I got a free digital copy from Paizo for review. They aren't paying me or anything, they just gave me a free review copy of the book. Still, that's pretty awesome. Thank you, Paizo. So, Divine Mysteries is mainly a book about updating all of the deity stats since the remaster and Gorham's passing. The stat blocks for deities have been updated for the Pathfinder Remaster project to remove alignments and add holy or unholy sanctifications. But there's more to this book than just a deity update. There are new spells, new deities, new archetypes, including new class archetypes, a lot of stuff. Some of the existing deity stat blocks have also been changed. There's some name changes, a few domain changes, it's all pretty cool. There's a lot more than just removing alignment for a deity and adding sanctification. I'm still reading and processing all of it, digesting it so I can write scripts. So today I'm just going to put out a small video talking about something new in the book that I really like. Covenants. So, covenants are like pantheons. If you don't know what a Pathfinder pantheon is, it's a group of gods who get together for a common cause and then players can worship that cause. Each pantheon has a stat block like a deity, edicts and anathemas, bonus spells, sanctification, the whole nine yards. So let's say, for example, you can't choose between the deities Desna, Serenray, and Shellen. You like them all. That's fine, there's a pantheon of all three gods. It's called the Prismatic Ray, and it's all about fighting evil and encouraging art and creativity. Now, pantheons are covered in Divine Mysteries, but they aren't new. I've even briefly talked about them before on this channel. What is new are covenants. Covenants are kind of like pantheons, except they aren't made up only of gods. In fact, they don't have to be made up of any gods. Instead, they are made up of entities with spiritual power like nature spirits and the like, pooling their resources to further their own cause. As an example, let's say you want to make a cleric who worships fire, just like the concept of fire. Well, there is the Light of the Everlasting Flame Covenant, which is all about light and fire. It's made up of fire elementals, residents of the elemental plane of fire, phoenixes, so on and so forth. And if that isn't your thing, there are similar covenants for the other elemental planes as well. Now, covenants can have deities as their members. The Good Neighbors Covenant has several, but they don't have to have any. Also, the book describes pantheons as like a business contract between business partners, and a covenant is like a bunch of close friends coming together to work for a common goal. It also openly admits that the line between covenants and pantheons is pretty blurry. One thing about pantheons and covenants. Technically, to worship either, you are supposed to choose a single deity or spiritual power in that pantheon or covenant and follow that deity's edicts and anathemas as well as all the edicts and anathemas of the pantheon or covenant. Not sure how that's supposed to work when there are no deities to worship and thus no edicts and anathemas to follow. Like, take light of the everlasting flame. What are the edicts and anathemas of the plane of fire or a particular phoenix? Also, it says that the GM can allow players to ignore the whole must worship a primary deity thing, which is what I generally do. I mean, forcing someone to follow two sets of edicts and anathemas just to get access to the deity or, I mean, deity stat block that they want is kinda silly. Plus, again, it doesn't make sense for covenants that don't necessarily have a deity to follow. Lastly, just wanted to point out some fun covenants. The Pandemonia is a covenant all about chaotic fae trying to disrupt the status quo, and they have the Gnomish Flick Mace as a favored weapon, so that's awesome. The Readied Strike Covenant has the Lance as a favored weapon. The Lance has never before been a favored weapon of a deity as far as I know, so that's pretty awesome for, like, cavalry war priests. I really like the Faith in the Fallen Covenant, which is basically all about remembering and honoring those who failed to become gods by taking the test of the Starstone. And is maybe powered by them? That's actually pretty cool, I like that. The idea that even though they failed the test of the Starstone, that they, together, have an amount of power that kind of approaches a god, I like that. Gives all those that failed the test of the Starstone a second chance, kinda sorta. 
Anyway, that's all for Covenants. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you like and subscribe. That tells not only me, but also YouTube that you like this kind of content and would like to see more. And until next time, thank you, good luck, and happy gaming.